I'm Debbie Godfrey. Welcome to the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. So today I wanted to talk about something that can happen with your child where it looks like it's the goal of inadequacy or avoidance, but it it isn't really, but we can still handle it with similar, well, similar ways to, to deal with it. And what happens is, this usually happens around schoolwork when a child is struggling in one of their classes. So let's say they're struggling in their math class. And so when we ask them to do, the, to do their homework, they'll say, oh, I can't, I'm too tired, or it's too much, or I'm overwhelmed. And it'll really look like the goal of inadequacy, and it could be. So you have to know, is this a, is this a course that your child is actually struggling in, or are they just overwhelmed and they are in fact in the goal of inadequacy? If they're truly in the goal of inadequacy, then the two tools that I gave you yesterday to break up the task into smaller steps. So with some, some kind of schoolwork, it's like, well, how about if you work on your math for three minutes and then take a break for three minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever you think a reasonable amount of time that your child can deal with and give them a timer and let them be in charge of moderating that time. And you can also do the distract them and give it to them by, you know, just going over and putting your arm around at them and, you know, encouraging them to do their homework. That is, you know, I know you can do this, keep up the good work, I'll hang out here if you want me to, and I know you can do it. And so, you know, keeping a real positive attitude and don't giving up. Enjoy the process of being there while your child works through their discouragement. Now, if it's the other other thing where the child actually is doing, is struggling with the subject, What this is, is it's where a child actually is, in fact, inadequate in an area. So sometimes if they're struggling in a subject, they really can't do it. And so instead of trying and saying, I need help, I can't do it, it's too much, they whine and they say, you know, I'm tired and they make excuses and that sort of thing. And it's kind of like a saving face thing. And when this occurred for me, it was with my daughter, Brianna, and she was about 10, and she had decided to do VYBA basketball. And they didn't have enough coaches, so my um, my boyfriend and I signed up to be coaches, and I knew nothing about basketball, and he was the one who knew about basketball. So we decided I'd schmooze with the parents and take care of all the details and he would teach the girls basketball. So we get out there and Brianna, my daughter, was just whining and crying and I can't. And he'd ask them to do laps and she couldn't run and he asked them to do drills and she couldn't dribble the ball and she'd throw it backwards. And everybody was like, come on, Brie, come on, Brie, come on, Brie, because she's coach's daughter. So you know, everybody wanted to be nice to her. So I'm going through my books. I'm trying to figure out what's the goal here. Why, why is she doing this? What's, what's going on? And it looked like the goal of inadequacy, but distracting and give it to him didn't give it to her. Didn't seem to make sense, nor did breaking it up into smaller steps. And that's when I read a, a brief version in positive discipline that said, sometimes your child goes into the goal of inadequacy because they are in fact inadequate. So I'm searching frantically. What is the redirection for this? Well, there's technically not a redirection because it's not really a misbehavior. And what it is is that you need to give them increased one-on-one skill building. Oh, so what happened when we discovered that, I had a talk with Chris and he, he sat down with Brianna and he said he was going to spend an extra hour a day with her doing skill building. So before the practices, he was spending more time with her, helping her get up to the skill level where she could be successful. And that's the corrective measure for that. So if you have a child who's whining, crying because they are, in fact, inadequate in an area or not skilled enough to feel confident as what happens with children often in math or in English or whatever their bad subject is. So helping them increase their confidence, getting them a tutor, doing extra time with them, some way, getting an educational consultant. I did that once with Bree when she was in junior high when she needed extra help. So figure out some way to get them up to a skill level for where they can feel confident and competent. I've gone over time, so I hope this has helped. Have a great day. Happy parenting. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Debbie Godfrey, owner and founder of PositiveParenting.com. I hope you'll go and check out my website and follow me on Instagram and let me know about what you thought about today's episode. Did you learn something new 
were you able to do something different with your children? Did you have a success story? Those are my favorite to share. Let me know. Contact me. I'd love to hear from you. And also, what future topics would you be interested in hearing about on the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast? Thank you so much for being here and for all of your support. Take care and happy parenting. Hey!